Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. The 17th edition of DSA 2022 is taking place from 28th of March till 31st of March at Malaysia International Trade and Exhibition Center in Kuala Lumpur where HAL is also participating. Senior Minister of Defense of Malaysia had visited HAL stall appreciating the capabilities of HAL. HAL has also tweeted that the defense minister is keen in looking forward for a long-term relationship between the two countries. R. Madhavan, the chairman and managing director of HAL, has briefed the defense minister on various activities of the company highlighting LCA Tejas and Su-30 MKI programs. In the last six months, we have seen India aggressively pushing for the export of LCA Tejas with its participation in two major international events which are Dubai Air Show 2021, Singapore Air Show 2022. In today's video, we will try to understand how India is trying to pitch in for LCA for the Royal Malaysian Air Force RMAF, and what are the key deals made between two countries to facilitate this. And where does LCA stand before its competitors? So let's get started. To begin with, let's try to understand the requirement of RMAF. Under the RMAF's Capability 55 or CAP 55 Future Force Structure Program, the service intends to field three fleet LCA squadrons by 2055. A request for bids was issued on 22nd of July 2021 by Malaysian Ministry of Defence for the supply and delivery of new light combat aircraft dubbed as Fighter Lead in Trainer Light Combat Aircraft or FLIT LCA. The prospective procurement involves eight aircraft to replace the BAE Hawk 108 and 208 light combat aircraft fleets and Armachi MB-339CM trainers operated by Royal Malaysian Air Force. The selected vendor will have to source or buy at least 30% of their products or services from Malaysian companies. Interestingly, this bid was released in the same month when Chinese military aircraft reported coming close to Malaysian exclusive economic zone. On 1st of June 2021, it was reported that 16 Chinese military transport planes have come close to violating Malaysian airspace after they were detected conducting suspicious activity over the South China Sea and the Royal Malaysian Air Force has to scramble its Hawk 208 jets to ward them off. Malaysia has invited proposals from various competitors including FA-50 light attack aircraft developed by Korea Aerospace Industry KAI, M346FA fighter attack aircraft variant developed by Leonardo of Italy, Yak-130 combat trainer aircraft developed by United Air Aircraft Corporation of Russia and MiG-35, and JF-17 of China. Lately, Turkey has also entered into the competition fielding its under-development Hurjet by Turkish Aerospace Industry TAI. The TAI general manager even said that if Hurjet wins the tender, 15 of the 18 aircraft will be manufactured in Malaysia itself. In total, there are competitors from six different countries fighting for this bid. Exporting the fighter jet to a country is not a piece of cake, especially for the country like India, which has recently ventured into this. The four major factors which play the key role in the export of a fighter is the geopolitics, economy, technology, and marketing. Malaysia is a small economy and it's wisely looking to exploit the opportunity to fill in the gap of its trainer aircraft which can even take the combat missions efficiently. If you look closely out of the six competitors, only LCA Tejas MQ-1A and JF-17 are full-fledged fighter jets with their equally capable trainer version. MiG-35 is way too capable with only twin engine fighter in this competition but it has its own challenges which we will discuss shortly. The remaining fighter jets are primarily developed for training purpose with very light combat capabilities therefore these trainer jets cannot match the combat capabilities of LCA Tejas MQ-1 and JF-17. 
Interestingly, GS-17 lost the ground in the competition from day one because of China's aggression, which was one of the reason why Malaysia has released the bid in the same month when this incident happened. If Malaysia decide to buy Chinese fighter jets, it will have to be dependent on China for its spare parts, maintenance and weapons package. China will definitely use this as a tool of bargain in its own interest. It will be a military strategy blunder if you are trying to use Chinese technology against China. The Russian Yak-130 is an impressive trainer come light attack aircraft. However, in the lights of ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict and draconian sanctions levied on Russia by the Western countries, it's highly unlikely that Malaysia would be considering the Russian trainer as an option. This could be one of the main reasons why even MiG-39 would be out of the competition. Further, the operational and maintenance cost of MiG-35 is going to be more than twice of the other fighters in the competition. Now if we talk about the capabilities, the Leonardo M346FA, TAI Hurjet and KI FA-50 are no match for LCA Tejas MK1A. The only fighter that is somewhat close to Tejas MK1A in terms of capabilities is KI's FA-50. However, what makes Tejas a very potent and versatile platform is its weapons package such as Pramhos NG and Astra MK1 air-to-air missiles. Tejas supports American, Israeli, French, other European, Russian and Indian weapon packages. There is not even a single fighter in the world to offer such a diversified weapons package. Recently, an interesting infographic was released by HL for LCA Tejas targeting DSA 2022 where we can see 17 different types of weapons that can be integrated with LCA Tejas. HL has also released an interesting video of LIFT that is Lead in Fighter Trainer which is basically a twin seater LCA Tejas MK1A trainer keeping an eye on DSA 2022. The aggressive marketing campaign by HL is quite visible in this week. In many forums, you would have also heard some discussion around the rejection of Tejas due to Israeli component which is primarily its AESA radar Elta ELM-2052 because Israel and Malaysia do not have good relations. Now if we assume that it is true, then the next fighter in the competition would be FA-50 which is again using ELM-2052 AESA radars. However, HL can offer Uttam ACE radar to Malaysian Air Force if Israeli component becomes a blocker and at the same time KAI has no such indigenous option. As per HL Chief R. Madhavan, almost every one of the RMAF requirements had been met by HL and others such as onboard oxygen generating system could be easily engineered. HL has offered RMAF the sophisticated Mark 1A version of Tejas which has mid-air refueling, active electronically scanned air radar, electronic warfare capability and ability to fire beyond visual range missiles. While the capability is one factor, but the most important factor is money. The GDP of India is 7.5 times that of Malaysia, so definitely Malaysia will have a smaller defense budget. To sort out this problem, an MOU was signed with Metals and Minerals Trading Corporation of India as channelizing partner for the import of palm oil for likely counter trade for the sale of LCA Tejas to Royal Malaysian Air Force. This I would say is a master stroke as Malaysia will not have to spend a dollar thereby saving its forex reserve for buying LCA Tejas from India. And at the same time, HL will gain access to Malaysian market which can further extend to additional 36 fighter jet orders as planned by Malaysia by 2055. RMAF expects to pay $900 million for 18 fighters or $45 to $50 million per fighter jet. The Tejas is understood to be falling in that price band. The Korean fighter is understood to be slightly more expensive than Tejas and the Russian MiG-35 significantly. Overall, from all perspective, geopolitically, technically and economically, 
the lift or LCA Mark 18 trainer is one fighter that fits into RMAF requirement and at the same time stand out of the other competing fighters. If this deal is inked, it will be the first export order for LCA Tejas and much needed breakthrough for Indian defense ecosystem. This was today's update. Please let us know what is your views about these in comment section. Feel free to post your comments and suggestions about any topic related to defense sector on which you want to hear from us. With this, I would like to say goodbye and jai hind friends. Please like and subscribe our video if you have not done already. We'll be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in defense sector.